What's up guys, in this video I'm gonna show you seven core features that you need to know about to become an OBS super user. All this is in chapter four of the OBS super user guidebook. Let's get into it. What's up guys, really quickly before we get started, you should know you can get a copy of the OBS super user guidebook for free in the link below. You can pick up a paperback copy on Amazon and don't forget to subscribe, only about 10% of our audience is subscribed and if you wanna see more videos like this, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, it really motivates us and helps us wanna make more videos for you guys. The first feature is studio mode. You do not need to use OBS in studio mode, but you should know what it is and how it works. Now, studio mode is available in the bottom right area. And what it does is it gives you the ability to have a preview of a screen and then a program. So you have your preview, what you may decide to change and edit before you cut or transition to it. So if you have lots of different scenes, this is very popular in video production. It's a core part of OBS, you can either decide to just have one screen where you automatically are able to click to go to it, or you can go to studio mode and have a preview of what you're going to transition to and use the transition buttons on the fly, which is very common in video production, but maybe you don't need it and it's not necessary. And there's a lot of workarounds to not have to use that extra step from transitioning back from preview and output. In fact, one of the core features we're going to show here is a transition override. And what that does is for each scene, if you right click the scene, it allows you to automatically choose the type of transition that you want to go to. So you can just skip the steps, make it easier if you're a one man production or you're on camera, you don't need to use studio mode. And there's a lot of great tools that allow you to simply control your stream by a click or a hotkey without needing to use studio mode. So that's the first core feature that we wanted to discuss. Now, if you're new to OBS, you're just getting started, obviously there's a scenes area, there's a sources area, and inside of these scenes and sources area is our next big core feature. You can see some of my sources here are off completely, and then some of my sources can be locked. So you can toggle the vis visibility of a source and you can lock a source. Now, why would you want to do that? Well, for example, and we talked about this earlier, you could change the visibility of an entire folder of sources. We talked about being organized and you can also lock specific things so that they can't get nudged out of place. They're automatically locked once you're done moving them. So that's all really nice. And then if you select the scene, there is now a new feature. This is new with OBS 27 you can actually choose a show transition and a hide transition. And what that means is you could have like, let's check out a swipe for swiping left. And we can preview what this is going to do. It's essentially going to swipe in left or right. You can choose the direction and it's just really cool. Let's go ahead and try it. So now when we transition in, and I'm also going to do a hide transition of a swipe as well. Now, when we toggle this visibility, it comes in and out. When it's a piece, when it's a picture in picture, look how, how nice this looks when it just slides in and out. Like very cool feature. This is a core feature of OBS is the ability to organize these sources and toggle between their visibility and locking them. And then by right clicking them, opening up all of the options inside of OBS. You can even now set colors for different scenes and sources, even folders to organize them. Now, the other thing too that we should mention is the up and down arrows. You can move sources up and down. And what that means is you have a layering system. So you can see uh, the lower third there is showing up above or below depending on these arrows. So they work in up here is the top layer and then towards the bottom is the bottom layer. Now you'll also notice, by the way, that there's a new media bar here, and this allows you to automatically get into the scene properties, filters, or to refresh the scene. Now, if it is a video, as you're seeing in the background here, it also opens up a play bar where you can scrub the video, pause the video, and restart the video. All of that is kind of a core feature of operating scenes and sources. 
Now, we talked a little bit about animated scenes, and I wanted to kind of explain how you can put all of this together in a layering system. You can see here as an example where we have live video in the background. We have a recorded video on loop, which is an animated sidebar. And then we have those informational squares that go show up. And this is a very popular way to have like a talk show or a person presenting with additional information. What you can do is you can layer these together and then work with some of those animated transitions, ins and outs to make it look really beautiful. And it's a really great way to work with this kind of stuff. Now, the next big core feature, multi-view in the view tab under multi-view and i'm going to do multi-view windowed here you can see there's a preview and there's a program and then it actually allows you to see up to eight scenes and click them to get them where you want them to go now i find this to be a really awesome tool for obs now you can choose to like maybe put it on the side of obs you can put it in another window and you can use it as a visual tool to click where, which scene you want to go to with the live video preview of the scene. So that multi-viewer tool can be used in full screen and it can be used windowed. It's a core feature of OBS and it really helps you kind of see everything that's going on. Now, the next core feature is audio mixer. And this one's probably even one of the most important. You can see the audio mixer down here. It can be completely taken out of the OBS interface if you need it to. You can view it in a vertical layout, which a lot of people enjoy. And then you can also go in and apply filters, properties, and then more importantly for a lot of people is the advanced audio properties. I have so many people who say, why is my audio out of sync inside of OBS? This is how you fix it. Essentially, you can add a few milliseconds of latency or offset to any of your audio sources that aren't matching up with the video. In general, I usually recommend starting at like 25 milliseconds, then doing 50, and then doing 75. You can stand in front of a camera and count like 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, 0. And when you're doing that, try to match up the audio to the lip sync. And by adding some additional latency to the audio, you can sync everything up. Now you can also choose whether or not you want to monitor that audio in your headphones and you can choose which tracks you would like to have that audio associated with because you will see that we have the option to choose which devices are global, which devices are being monitored and where that monitoring is going to. So if you're mo you're monitoring on headphones, if you're monitoring the uh, speaker, you can choose all of that here. And then you can choose, of course, which one of these are global or which one of these are going to a specific track. Now in the output side under advanced, this is where we can choose which tracks of audio will be included on our recordings and our streams. See this? So we can actually have on a recording, we can have up to six tracks separate from the streams which we can do one two three four or five or six so sometimes you want to record additional or background audio or a different mix of audio on your recording which might be different from your stream next is hotkeys hotkeys are a core feature of obs everyone really likes them there's a new plugin that we'll look at which which add as the ability to update the visibility of filters. That might sound a little advanced. We're going to talk about it in the super user guidebook when we get to plugins. But essentially, inside filters, you can set up basically the ability to quickly do almost any task inside of OBS with a keystroke. So I can start recording by clicking Shift R and stop recording. So usually there's like a toggle option where, you know, basically you can have one key for showing or hiding a source transitioning to a scene so you can switch to a scene you can show scenes and hide scenes etc cetera, etc cetera. it's all here inside of hotkeys the obs has done a really great job with that and then filters is another key feature this is going to be our next video so we're not going to dig into each of the filters just yet but filters are a huge core feature inside of obs any input you can or sorry source you can click and hit the filters button and you can add a bunch of audio filters, 
or effect filters and get them directly in to basically change and alter or optimize and set up your system here. You can see a lot of different filters available. The key takeaways are that filters can be applied to any source, so in any order. So those filters are really popular. Those OBS sources can really be used to create awesome complicated scenes, but you may want to use the layering and the ability to lock each of those sources together to make sure everything is working. You can toggle the visibility on and off for sources and choose animations, which can be paired with hotkeys. So hotkeys make things a lot easier. And then if you're having any audio issues or audio sync issues, go into the advanced audio settings to work on them. That's a lot of core features. It's good that we're getting that out of the way because it's almost time to dig into audio filters, video filters, and then over 10 amazing plugins for OBS. So let's get into it. Yeah.